and it was. And you're saying you're part of that. It was, it was, talk to us about your company. Was, what was your your it, company? But, but I think also, I mean, Amos, what Amos was saying, and I'm not going to come here and lecture you about how it is in Ghana. But you said yourself also this uh, about paternalism and things like in Ghana. I think, but 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 I admit and can understand what what Amos is saying is here that people in senior positions they are so. Uh, protecting their image as seniors and if there's something they don't understand then they try to isolate it and say okay this is I don't really understand I don't want it to get too influential and I don't want to get into it yes. so, so they are kind of building yes I think kind of defense of that out of this Yes, yourself. it's very interesting. I think Kenneth Foriata said something great once, which was sort of there's more respect for elders than there is for ideas yeah. mm. in this yeah. culture. Yeah. And I think it's very true. And I think it's, it's, it's a nice thing and it makes yeah, it a very sure. respectful <laughs> place. But it's very damaging in terms of innovation and challenging the status quo. It blocks, it blocks when you take this respect, which is good in a the same now. I mean, a tribal society, whatever traditional society. But if you take this into the traditional bureaucratic hierarchy, yes, yes. I mean, then it's com really yes. damaging. Yes. It's damaging yes. the, whole, the whole idea of a well-functioning structure. If yes. you have this kind of respect, yeah. traditional respect built into it, yeah. Yeah. then you create this stiff yeah. system. I mean, I, I'm, I, what I was sort of trying to say about the emergence of new content services in the, in the mid-90s in New yeah. York is even then we thought that this is a fantastic idea but it yeah. still didn't really fly I mean it wasn't like sure. a light switch that sure. turned on overnight sure. what really drove internet usage and penetration I mean there were different waves there was sort of the vanity phase yeah. probably yeah. where people did it because they wanted to publish yeah. but really what drove it was people found something useful sure. and then they started using yeah. it and that turned transformed really yeah. 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 and I think the Ghana isn't you know, I think the young generation is now just beginning to find it, just beginning to find it with Facebook. It's moved from an email phase mm -hmm. now onto a communication phase, mm -hmm. a sort of a gossiping, a sort of an, you know, um, and we need to move into a phase where we're actually looking at products and services because, in fact, this environment, if I compare New York in 95 to Accra in 2010, this is like... I mean, it's incredible opportunity to apply technology because so many parts of it aren't well organized and are inefficient and could really benefit from uh, a better application of information. And agriculture is the area that we're focused on. And, 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 and um, you know, you can see huge benefits in terms of reducing fuel costs on visits and transport, um, giving farmers confidence in their day-to-day -day activities. It's not about giving them necessarily information, it's right. about giving them the confidence yep. when they're negotiating a trade deal right. that we yep. see is where you can impact. Right. And that's all driven by ICTs, but it's not ICT. Well, why, why, why don't you tell us a bit about eCircle? The last time I spoke to you, you said a guy in Salaga had increased his income by several margins? Yes. Well, I mean, ESOCO is the project that, we're, that we've been working on for about four years. We've got about 40 people here in Accra. 20 of them are tech developers. And um, we're in about nine countries, partnered with different programs and projects. Um, and it's a mix of things. It's sort of a very traditional market information system where prices are distributed. But in this case, the prices are customized and they're delivered on your mobile phone regularly automatically so you don't have to do anything you're profiled and you receive this information and then you can act on that information and the, we've got a pilot in northern Ghana with Send Foundation uh, where we've had about 500 farmers uh, we're up to about 1500 farmers now and um, the the original concept of market information systems that prices are empowering which has never worked because it's always been a public service never particularly accurate and no distribution model where we've solved all of those issues are really having apparently dramatic impacts on farmers okay. both in negotiating a better price um, changing where they actually sell changing their whole relation trading relationships now they're actually sending product to markets themselves and avoiding some of the traders altogether and also in storing the text messages and trending pricing when we ask them, would you like this to be, are there issues around literacy and would you like the phone to speak the messages to you? They were like, no, 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 no. We want it written down, um, which was sort of fascinating because they're I mean, referring after all, to it. Where can, where can Lotto 
is very well deep in Ghanaian culture. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the literacy issue is an issue, but I mean, it's not as big perhaps as we normally think it is. So I think that we're seeing uh, success, but what we're also seeing is a huge opportunity in agro-industry more broadly amongst processors, exporters, that they're trying to manage these distributed networks of people, suppliers, distributors, transporters, and managing a network of people is about communicating to them. Do you, have you grown the product? How much have you planted? Have you weeded? I've noticed a disease, locusts swarming. You know, it's, a, it's an information network, and right now, all the tools that we're so familiar with about emails and websites and all this kind of stuff really haven't been applied to this sector, and this sector is 60% of the working population in this country. Um, you can make a phone call, and that's dramatic, but it is one-to-one, -one and it's yeah. relatively expensive. So if we can work out a way to apply effectively the Internet to promote cheap and mass communication on a peer-to-peer -peer basis or whatever it is, then we should see uh, tran transformation, and that's where we're trying to not just build these tools for market prices, yeah. but for businesses to use it as a cheap way to acquire but, 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 so mass now market e data. East e e Circle is now a business, a uh, social yes. enterprise. So uh, uh, what's your bottom line? How do you make money? Well, I mean, the bottom line is I think that we're trying to, in, to do development through business, um, which I think in a way keeps you honest. Uh, we... We thought we could get grants to build this system for smallholder farmers in rural areas, and we weren't. So we're like, how are we going to build something of value that people are going to pay for? Mm. Yeah. And so it's like we were just constantly listening and learning and, 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 and staying honest to the market. It's a, it really makes you a great listener. And um, what we found is that businesses and individuals are willing to pay for these kinds of tools if they're packaged and delivered and supported in an appropriate way. So our model is we just sell subscriptions. If you're a business, you pay a big subscription and you've got a big network. And okay. if you're an individual, you pay a small subscription and you just have yourself. And so if you can sell enough subscriptions and access to the platform on an annual basis, then if you be a how, how, how do you work the profitable business. Uh, information, more, I mean information in the broad sense, the institutional side of it. How do you know, get to know about the farm business? How do you get to know about potential customers? You mentioned the same foundation, but what else? Well, one of the things that we do is we've we built our own content network. So we have, in 30 markets across the country, we have designated enumerators who we've trained up, who are profiling their communities in terms of prices, trade sales, offers to buy and sell, and also profiles of traders themselves. So that's a kind of a key differentiator. You have to build content. Content doesn't exist. And Google and Nokia and all these big guys that are coming in with their current models where you're just repurposing content um, are struggling with that because it doesn't exist. So you make your own content. And then in terms of deployment, you really... It's too expensive so do, 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 to deploy you feel, directly. You, you have to go through existing programs or businesses. And if a business says, wait a minute, I can ask my cashew buyers at the end of every Friday in an SMS question, how many kilos of cashews did you buy this week? Then they are probably going to train up those buyers in mobile phone usage, how to, how to use it and how to respond, etc., etc. Oh, I was just off a question coming out. How, how is the... Penetration is there an issue on, on not having internet access in the villages here, or is it not an issue? It's not an issue. It's not an issue. Not an issue. But it's just based on SMS. In fact, where you've taken internet connectivity, it really hasn't worked. Okay. You know, where you've actually installed some rural telecenters, the yeah, model, yeah. it's like right. they're all closed down, they're all the machines can't be maintained, the connectivity is too expensive, and so forth. And I think it's driven by the fact of what we saw even in the market here. Yeah. On the one hand, you've got your telecenter in your pocket, yes. and on the other hand, somebody is going to create an internet cafe and you've got to go into it. Right. In, in real terms, people don't leave their stores and their places mm -hmm. of business mm -hmm. to go through a rather awkward and slow interface to try and find a little bit of possible information. That model won't work. So it's not delivered via our classic internet. It's got to be delivered over the phone. In